Hey guys, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Thank you for all of your questions and feedback on last week's Whiteboard Wednesday. To be honest, the response has been quite overwhelming with how many questions and how much feedback I've had. So thank you very much for that. Keep the questions coming. I'm going to do my best to answer them for you. Now, today's question is about the periodization or the planning of your micro cycles. Now, micro cycles are typically a week, a week long block of training. Now, it's only sort of been micro cycle usually equals one week, and it's only sort of become sort of common to make a micro cycle one week long just in the Western society and how we work. Obviously we've got seven days, we work then, five days work, then we've got the weekend to see out that seven day block. It ties in quite nicely with our calendar. However, a micro cycle doesn't have to be seven days. So when I'm talking about weeks up here, I'm typically talking about seven days, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, I've run micro cycles for some athletes that have been five days or some up to even 14 days. So I'm talking weeks here just because that's generally how we do things. So the traditional way of periodizing training is on a three load weeks to one recovery week sort of ratio. And this is the sort of traditional way that is sort of being founded in most periodization. And a lot of people get caught up on this pattern here, saying I have to load for three weeks and then have one recovery week. But as we'll have a look, it doesn't have to be like this. Okay, this is just what the sort of first way around periodization came up with. So in here we've got our red load weeks. And what we sort of see is there's a progression of training load. It sort of steps up every week, makes it sort of harder either by doing more intense training or longer training or a combination of the two. So often you'll see in training plans that our load weeks are referred to as build weeks or hard weeks. Now I like to call them load weeks because that's essentially what we're doing. We're loading the body with training stress. So it's not necessarily a hard week because it could be a skill related stress where the training's not hard. And we're not actually building the body because we're actually breaking it down with the load and the stress that we put on it. So I've just titled it load weeks in the red. And then the recovery weeks, they're often termed easy weeks or off weeks. However, when you think about what we're trying to do, we're not you know, so much taking the training easy because we could still be working on our technical skills. But we're really focused on the recovery aspect of that week. Getting the body to recover and soak up the training that we did in these load weeks. So looking at this first example here, this is our traditional three to one work to recovery periodization plan. And you'd sort of just keep repeating that. Over here we've got two load weeks, one recovery. Two load weeks, one recovery. So this is our traditional two to one. And then finally, over on the side here, we've got one load week, one recovery, one load, one recovery, one load, one recovery. So this is our one-to-one. -one. Now, a lot of people get sort of caught up in this end. And what I have found from personal experience working with um, over 300 athletes at the last count that I did, is that this sort of plan or concept of periodization works really well for those highly trained athletes, those professional athletes that have got time to dedicate to their training and don't have too many outside stresses affecting them. If you try to give this sort of a training periodization to someone who was working 40 plus hours a week, has a family, has a million other things going on in their life, usually find by the second load week they crash and burn. They get sick, they get tired, they can't complete the training. So what happens is you usually have good training for about the first one and a half weeks, and then the rest of your training over this period is a complete write-off. Either it doesn't get done, 
they because they get sick or injured or they just are so run down and tired that their intensity plateaus are unable to put in the, uh, the, the training intensity that's required. I'd say this was the most common or the sort of most used by busy working people who are also trying to train as well. Where you've got two load weeks, one recovery week. And often this recovery week doesn't have to be a full week. Often within five days the person's bounced back enough to get back into it. So this here is often really good. Most people avoid the one-to-one -one, thinking that it's not going to get them good results because it's so far away from the three-to-one. However, the one-to-one -one work to rest um, training weeks that I've sort of programmed people in the past have got such good results because the training that you do in these load weeks is just so effective. You know you've only got seven days to concentrate on that training, get it done, and then you've got recovery time. And often what we'll do is run it as five recovery days during the actual work week, and then our next load block becomes two extra days longer. So there's different ways you can play around with this. If you are really busy at work, you've got a busy family life, this one-to-one -one work to recovery, um, load recovery uh, week is the way to go in my opinion. You get such good results out of it. Two-to-one if you've got a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more time and are able to push it a little bit. Three-to-one if you're a highly trained athlete, got lots of times, minimal stresses outside of training. So. It's not a one-size-fits-all, as many periodization textbooks would have you believe. So have a play around and see what works for you. And also, it won't be a one model suits you all the time either. So what happens is often in base training, I will get athletes doing a three-to-one work, sorry, load to recovery uh, periodization plan during their base phase. And this is because the training intensity is not all that high. So even if you start to get tired at the end of your second week or onto your third week, the training intensity is sort of just steady anyway, so you can afford a little bit of a drop in intensity and you're just sort of working on your duration. And then as your speed starts to, your speed phase starts to kick in, go into a more of a two to one, the higher intensity training tends to take a little bit more out of the body so you just want to shorten up the uh, load phase and hit it with a bit more recovery so that you can maintain the intensity of your training in the successive weeks. And then finally, the one-to-one -one is really good if you have got a lot of competition on, so you're racing every week and there's a lot of intensity happening, or if you're doing really high power, high speed type training because you're getting close to a competition. So not only can you mix these up between people depending on their, their needs, you can mix these up throughout the whole periodization of your training program. The key thing that we all need to remember is our work recovery cycle. So remember, when we train, we don't actually get better, we get worse. Then we get a partial recovery, and then we train again and we get worse again. And we get this sort of sawtooth effect. And so this here would be over our, say this loading cycle here. And then what we do is we let ourselves freshen up with small training sessions. So we reset to a new level over our recovery week. And then we get back into it, breaking the body down over the load cycle, so that during the recovery we're able to reset to a new level. If we remember this model and nothing else with your training, load and then recovery, you'll go a long way with your training. If it's always just load, 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 you're going to burn out and your body's going to make you take recovery. And when your body makes you take recovery, it's usually more prolonged, 
than is required and you end up worse off than you are. So there you have it. A little bit of information about a very complex topic about periodizing your micro cycles or your weekly training structure. If you've got any more questions, if you want more information on this or other topics, keep the questions coming. Post below uh, in the comments box, send me an email, send a message on Facebook, whatever it is. Get out there, get amongst it, and we'll see you next week.